James Gall with Gone Encounters is a podcast where Gone Encounters are for everyone and yes, Gone Encounters are, especially for you, they really are. Hey, I'm really excited that uh, we are relaunching Prayer Storm and we'll be doing it in a step-by-step manner and instead of uh, only calling it Prayer Storm, we are rebranding it as the global prayer storm where every prayer counts and every sacrifice matters. So be watching for that. In fact, once a month, we'll be releasing a global prayer storm e-blast and also be using these uh, prayer encounter uh, podcast and releasing these as well, not only into the iTunes and the Charisma Podcast Network and things like that, but also releasing these Prayer Encounter podcasts through our monthly Global Prayer Storm e-blast. So we'll be building step by step, and so just uh, go along uh, on the journey with us And so I got a lot of things in store that I'm going to hold back on um, giving you the vision just step by step. So there's a little bit uh, for you there. Part one on the um, global um, prayer storm um, vision um, that uh, I have uh, laid out for you uh, was the part one on our, excuse me, prayer podcast that I did was on what? Being secure in God. And our theme verse was Isaiah 53, verse 5, by his wounds we are healed. And so part two in our prayer podcast for this week is, uh, episode 30 is Messes into Miracles. And um, my theme verse comes from Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. Matthew chapter 27, verse 46 from the New King James. Now, what do you think that is? It's one of the seven sayings of Jesus on the cross. And in fact, it's one of them that is like extraordinarily intense. It's for Jesus cries out and says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is the point in time on the cross where the sin of all people, generations past, the sin of all people, generations present, And the sin of all people, generations future, are flung upon the body of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross. And now God the Father cannot look upon sin, and he looks away. Jesus, who has had perfect communion from the very beginning, because he is an uncreated being, who's been in the bosom of the Father from the very beginning, cries out in anguish because he's only ever known perfect communion, co-munion, living in co-munity, community, unity, cries out because of separation, because sin separates. And he cries out in anguish and says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, you see, we understand that by his wounds we're healed. And we went over that briefly, the divine exchange, from out of Isaiah. Remember Isaiah 53, the divine exchange in part one in the previous podcast. But there's a lot of things, you know, I didn't teach through that thoroughly at all. I just mentioned it. But there's another dimension that happens right here. 
that it's really taught about. Jesus bears rejection. Jesus bears abandonment. Jesus carries the sense of being cut off, forgotten, forsaken, being alone. Have you ever felt being alone? I have. Have you ever felt being forsaken? I have. Have you ever felt? I have. Well, guess what? You have someone to identify with. His name is Yeshua. His name is Jesus. This is my theme, but I'm on a whole trail with you on journaling at the same time. And I'm on a trail of prayer podcast with you. How does this all connect? In fact, my theme is messes into miracles. In Matthew 27, 46, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, we belong to our master, Jesus, and he suffered utter rejection. We know because he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27, 46. By comparison, anything we suffer is actually insignificant. We don't know, I don't know, your journey with every step of its peril and power. I do know the pets and pinnacles of my lifestyle and of um, certain prophetic lifestyles, and I believe I can be a part of helping change this equilibrium in the body of Christ. For 50 or 60 years ago, Nobody much talked about the place of prophecy or things of this nature in the everyday congregation. No, it pretty comes up in a lot of places a lot of time. This groundswell may still seem small compared to the number of congregations in the worldwide body of Christ, but it appears to be growing steadily. And as we lift up the Lord Jesus Christ and we honor the prophetic word, Let's do our part to contribute to the health of the body of Christ because by his wounds, we're healed. And we can bring that over to the body of Christ. I believe that we're following in his footsteps. We should expect, in a sense at times, that we're not always going to be understood, but we have someone we can connect with. We have someone we can draw on. We have someone we can always go to. Hey, I always tend to go to the Word of God, and I tend to go to hymns, don't I? Yes, I do. You know, I really love this whole new sound that's out with this Man, would I ever like to meet these guys? You know, this Maverick City worship. Man, I just love their raw sound. Would I ever like to sing with them someday? Yo, would I? Yes, I do. I hope somebody, one of them gets this. You know, it's like because I grew up in the church. I know those hymns and I love their new raw twist. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah, because it's true. Uh huh. That's the God I know. Because by his wounds we're healed, being secure in the Father's love. What a friend we have in Jesus. Uh huh. It's true. Oh, what griefs we often bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer oh what needs we often forfeit 
Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Now, why do I do stuff like that? Because I can, and I got the mic, and you don't. <laughs> Messes in the miracles. Well, I'm a mess that God makes into a miracle. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Hey, you know I did my Christmas album and Christmas Wonderland, and I started, I did these little song story videos. I did seven of them. And they're just little five-minute-long things, and I tell the story in video behind the song. And I hold a calligraphy little plaque to give the overview of why am I doing this stuff anyway? Because for 45 years or so, I've had over my bedroom door a gift of a little calligraphy statement that it says, God respects me when I work, but he loves me when I sing. He said, James, makes sense. Well, I am. Because I journal. And you know some of the things that I journal? I just pulled out one of my journals. and In one of my journals, I've got some things like valued anchors, believers, and it's all based out of a dream. A dream on 115.17 that I had in Pasadena, California that we've had purpose-driven life, and now we have presence motivated people but we will come to a place where we will have values anchored believers isn't that interesting that's just the dream it's only a dream that i journaled we've had purpose driven lives we now have presence motivated people but we're coming to a time where we're going to need values anchored believers. Huh, maybe we're there. One fifteen seventeen. That's interesting, isn't it? Or how about maybe if I can find another page I wanted to go to. <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> Can you believe that? I lost it. I didn't lose it, actually. Oh, that one's interesting. <laughs> I have a lot of amazing, crazy things written down in these journals. I have a lot of journals. I don't write everything down. I don't write down as much as I should. But, hey, it's okay. Because... It's all about God takes our mess and he makes it into the next miracle. Did you know that? You know that God will take your mess and he'll make it into a next miracle? Yeah, he will. He really, really will. He will. <laughs> he will. Oh my goodness, I have so much stuff in here. Nope. Let's see. Oh my. Wow. Wow. Keep your eyes on your sons and your daughters. Hmm. Hmm. Christian creative communication. The word, the will, and the ways. The radiant, renowned renaissance is coming dig deeper so you can build higher these are all just little things that come to me often in dreams here's one that's really interesting <laughs> oh my gosh huh. 
This is something I wrote down on 5.17.16. Do you realize how happy you make your father's heart when you sing? You sing. <laughs> this is just outrageous for me to read this right now. Written on 5.17.16. Do you realize how happy you make your father's heart when you sing? You sing when... Oh my goodness, I can't even hardly read this. <laughs> Do you realize how happy you make your father's heart when you sing? You sing before, you will sing before thousands. <laughs> this is really hard for me to get out. <laughs> I don't know why this is really, because it's like hard for me to believe this. This is, came to me. I'm writing it. Okay, I'm just going to read it. I'm going to get over it and I'm going to read it. 5, 17, 16. Do you realize how happy you make your father's heart? When you sing, when you sing before thousands, you will sing to them like you sing before the one. What? Do you realize how happy you make your father's heart when you sing? When you sing before thousands, You will make them feel like you do when you sing before the king. Wow. Huh. <laughs> you make everything look beautiful. I actually went to heaven. I... My kidneys had shut down. Two other organs were in process. Two organs had shut down. My kidneys were in process of shutting down. And it looked like I was in the possibility of escaping. I went to heaven. I saw my mom and dad, and they looked beautiful. They were so stunningly beautiful. I saw my late wife, and everybody in heaven was beautiful. It's so hard to describe all of this. I don't talk about these things much. Some people do. I guess they have the commission to, and I don't know. Maybe one of these days I'll get over and I'll tell everybody all these stories I have. Well, here's one of them. You make everything beautiful. In your time, in your ways, in your majesty, Filled with mystery. You make everything beautiful in your own way. Messes into miracles. Mysteries into gladness. Let me do this again in closing. See, this is prayer, and this is journaling. This is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And this is empowering prayer. You make everything beautiful. I felt like crying. <laughs> I've never read this publicly ever before. It's my first time but this is written in a journal after I was sent back from heaven. In your time, in your ways, in your majesty, filled with mystery, you make everything beautiful. In your own way, messes into miracles mysteries 
into gladness. Father, in the healing name of Jesus, we direct our gaze to you. We find our purpose and meaning in life, not from our gifts and callings, but from your son, but being your sons and daughters. Help us to grow into maturity in our callings while learning how to walk and work together with others effectively and in love. We look to you as our source of validation, and we offer ourselves to be servant leaders in the body of Christ and to any sphere of society into which you lead us. Thank you for teaching us through the pioneers who have gone before us. In you we live and breathe and have our being. Amen and amen. This is James Gall going a little bit longer on a prayer encounter podcast on messes into miracles when you make everything beautiful. Amen, amen. The scribe, receiving and retaining revelation through journaling. God is speaking. Do you want to grow in your capacity to interpret the revelation that you're receiving? The Scribe was written with you in mind. James W. Galt brings us his brand new interactive book and journal that will take you on a step-by-step process designed to help you grow in greater intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Order The Scribe today at jamesgall.com.